I started losing my hair in my early 20s. By the time I was about 30, I was pretty bald. In, in the pattern of, of baldness, there's only certain areas that become bald. If your family has baldness, the likelihood is that you're also going to have it. I'd look in the mirror and say, you know, I've lost my hair. It would be nice to do something about it. Kazminsky doesn't believe bald is beautiful. He's about to undergo okay. a three-hour hair transplant operation. There you go. Okay. Now we're going to draw a line on this. One day, if I will have some possibilities, I will go and try hair transplant. Uh, that time, and it was in 94, 95, uh, hair transplant wasn't as good as today from a point of uh, treatments. And of course, I didn't want to take a risk to, to have hair transplant, which hair would be sticking from all over, and uh, mm -hmm. it's very noticeable. Today, uh, what we see, the results are much better, and I'm happy and willing to go for it. We have to hold the uh, hair up, so we're going to use uh, a tape to lift the hair up in the back here. I cannot formulate exactly why, but this is something from inside. Uh, when you talk to people, and sometimes you notice then they look up at, at your hair, and it feels not very nice. <laughs> You're not 100%, in other words. You at the same it. time, yes, I do realize after 45 years old, that we all go through it. Some people can take it easier. Some people have problems. And I'm one of them, I guess. And we're going to... Uh Put some local anesthetic into this area. By the age of 50, half of men have some hair loss, and by 65, nearly two-thirds of men are balding. I also believe in Dr. Larry Freeman because I've heard, I saw some sample of people before and after, and I see that uh, he's doing amazing work, and also technique today, it's a little different. We saw their micrograph, micrographs, it's not that noticeable as it used to be before. Before you see it right away, hair transplant, why did you do it? You see the, uh, the three blades, and they're separated 3.5 millimeters apart. And we're just going to sink this blade in here. Scientists now know that certain roots on the scalp are genetically predisposed to be sensitive to a specific hormone. Dihydrotestosterone is a byproduct of testosterone. On average, most hairs stick around for five years. But with the sensitive follicles, the growing phase shortens to a matter of months. The hairs fall out faster than they can regrow. You can see the angle, the direction of the, um, of the hair is in the same direction that his existing hair is. When I started to lose my hair, when I look at the mirror, when I brush my hair and I saw and I brush all my hair, <laughs> it felt so terrible that the end of the world. Here we have the little openings, and we just insert the follicle into the opening. Uh, if they're losing their hair, and uh, they, they've lost their self-esteem, and uh, they're, they're hiding under a hat, or they're using a comb over, this takes away, and now when they have their own, their own hair back, they're more outgoing. They take their hat off. They don't use the hair to comb over anymore and uh, they're much more outgoing. My patient, Leon Kazminsky, who's a producer and a director, who had his hair transplant a little over a year ago, is in his studio. I came by today to see how everything is going. Leon, you look terrific. What do people say about you? Thank you, Dr. Freeman, for dropping by. Yes, it has made a huge difference in my life. Uh, even my dog doesn't recognize me anymore and I don't have to wear a hat in the winter to protect my head from the cold. But uh, generally saying, uh, I feel much more energetic, much more youthful and very confident. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with us, Leon. As you can see, it's a very simple procedure. Why don't you go for it? Down, I want to extend this 
just just a little so the profile's down lower. Okay. Yeah, that, the whole life's run by advertising, so it doesn't matter after you get to know somebody. I agree, but it's first impressions. Will you ever get to the point where it doesn't matter? In a lot of cases, no. Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'm a corporate recruiter, and our clients always want vibrant people. And obviously, the younger you look relates to vibrant, ready to do a hard day's job, whatever. And a lot of times, they, they forget about the experience that older people have. So uh, in our society, we're all trying to look our age, if not a little bit younger. We certainly don't want to look any older. And in the corporate business world, hair can be very important because when you lose your hair or, or it's thinning, uh, you do look older, we all know that. Perfect hair on, on a male would relate to something that where you have a hairline. So the hairline does not attract attention. It's just there so people can focus in on what they should be, your eyes and your mouth, and when, when you're talking to them, and, and, and get an overall appearance of your face, not this a big channel of balding skin that, uh, that, that, that goes over the top of your head. Some of them do comb-overs, which they really shouldn't do. <laughs> they look very, very bad. There's nothing worse than seeing somebody that's receding or um, thinning out, and it's just kind of wrapped around the head a few times or going across. So I always suggest cut it as, as short as possible. Um, and that way the hair actually looks thicker and more stylish as well. If you can give someone a good haircut and make them feel a little bit more confident about themselves, then that's half the battle. I think it's driving us crazy. I think a lot of us are losing our hair. I think a lot of us um, are spending a lot of time trying to look better when, quite truthfully, is it helping? I don't know. I wonder sometimes if we really need to be doing all this. A lot of it should just relate to the person themselves. Good person, bad person, whatever. Females do it a specific way to attract us, and they know it works. And males try the same thing. And obviously, if you look younger, if you look fitter, if you look like you can take care of somebody better, that relates to money. If uh, you're better looking, better suits, better cars, better toys, it works. I think we're all a little bit trying to attract the other sex. One of the other significant contradictions of all of this is that the ideal body is frozen in time. It's a body that doesn't have a history, but it's also a body that doesn't change. And it's really rooted in a cult of, of youth. It's an ageless, perfect body. In the long term, I think what it does is that it it creates a desire for something that ultimately we can't have. We're all going to age. At some point, our bodies are going to look their age. Um, at some point, we're all going to die. OK, how's the, I'll let you see what that's like. Mm -hmm. How does it look now? That looks good. Okay, we're looking for a donor area now that we can take out. And his density is not very, very dense. You can see a lot of white between. So it's the more hair you can take, the better your result is going to be. So we just do a longer strip, is that right? Yeah, so we're going to take more. We're going to come from this area over to this area. Dr. Fremont, that, um, you, you do them now, so you take the sutures out in, in, in about 10 to 12 days instead of the dissolving type? And there's... Sew them back up again. So now we're going to the next stage. The tissue that has been taken out is already being dissected up into single hairs. And 
and um, we're now going to anesthetize the front and start creating some of the recipient holes in order to plant the, uh, the follicles. One here, and I'm just going to put that into the opening there. Okay, Dave, let's have a look. Well, that's great. Dave Woodard. Bob, how are you? No, thanks for returning my call. Um, we were successful in setting up the appointment for you. Uh, you have the address? Okay. Congratulations, and have a good interview. Thanks, Bob. Bye for now. Hmm? Let me go back on. I have, I have no idea. We should ask. She should ask find out. the recipe. Please thank Well, he was bald. Ding. <laughs> and now it, it just looks like he's thinning. It's not really a full head of hair, but it's a great improvement. Just a different look. Um, one that I wanted. And I am pleased. I probably need another two, three months of growth, you know, to make it a little bit longer, you know, to be able to comb it back a little bit. But I'm not very pleased. Worked out well. Uh, looks natural. A lot of people don't know. And, I, and I'm happy with it. I can't say that he appears more self-confident because he really is a self-confident kind of guy, but I think he's happier with himself. I, I know he is. So this has been two and a half, three months, so another four or five months, a lot of this hair here will be a lot bigger. I really don't care. <laughs> but you notice when people don't have it. And you notice it as a function of age. Mm, I think it's the other way around. It is? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's all right. Thank you. Wow. We were at a party, as a matter of fact, a Halloween party, and I showed them some of the before and after pictures, and they had forgotten. Because they get used to you the way you are. You know, friends, they get to know you. And they had forgotten what a dramatic effect it is. Yeah. I think women accept things the way that they are. And, well, I do. <laughs> uh, I'd say 80, 90% out there, no. No. It's just the way it is. Now, when they grow up and become a little bit more mature, will they change? Probably. But... Oh, you're talking about young women. I'm talking about older women. <laughs> I'm talking about medium older age women. women. understand. Medium age women. <laughs> that we all women. change. I know. But in the meantime, you have to meet <laughs> some young women to get medium women to get old. So you need some hair. That's it. I'm sorry. That's the way it works. We're hoping that you'll be as forgiving with us <laughs> as we are with you. <laughs> as long as I get hair, I can be forgiving at any time. Okay. Okay, Dave. <laughs> I'm pleased. I guess that's all I can say. And other people out there, if other guys, um, if they want to have it done, I I suggest with the with the right doctor, giving it a try. It's worthwhile to me. And hair down to uh, my shoulders. I was definitely into the grunge scene, so I like to have my hair fairly long and messy, a la Kurt Cobain. I've gone from one extreme to the other, very, very long to very short, like almost like a tennis ball type head. My expectations for my second surgery that I, I didn't get from the first are to have more of my head worked on and, and covered with healthy hair. It's this area here that they're going to concentrate on, okay, from about halfway to the top of the head to my hairline. And they're basically going to fill in the gaps. <laughs> so how you been? I've been well. Good. Been well, yeah. I'm uh, pretty pleased about the, uh, the first round of transplants. So what are you going to be doing uh, in my uh, second surgery? Uh, as we discussed, we're going to improve your hairline by putting more hair and by increasing density because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you're still in a losing process because you're still young. So later on, if you need more, you have to come back. This time we are going to work in the front. Oh, so great. You, it's going to be perfect oh, for you. That's awesome. Thank you. Before I was in radio, I, I worked uh, for many restaurants in the kitchen and finally moved on to a pharmaceutical company and this job paid well. The one thing about it though, it was pretty boring and I just figured that it was destined for greater things than driving a fork truck. It always came back to radio. 
I finally just decided to uh, say what the heck and quit. I decided to get in contact with Humble and Fred from, at the time, Edge 102. They were the morning show that I listened to uh, for the longest time. I wrote a, a cute little letter and uh,